Now we'll talk about what is probably the most fundamental equation in the entire field of electric cir circuitry, and that's Ohm's law. Now imagine some current flowing through a piece of material. So again, picture a wire here. Could be really, really long, and here's some electrons moving through the wire. Well, George Ohm, and here's a picture of him. That's G-E-O-R-G, -E no E on the end. That's the German spelling. He was a German physicist in the in the early part of the 1800s, so the early part of the 19th century. And he found experimentally that the current flowing through a wire depended on the voltage. He was using the batteries that were developed by Volta and, and ex doing some experimentation on his own and, and he realized that the current is proportional to the voltage. And that's a very significant fact. The current is proportional to the voltage. In other words, if one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. If you triple the voltage, that will triple the current. And the way we write this is the current is mathematically proportional to the voltage. I is proportional to V. Remember, I is the symbol for current. And then V, obviously, the symbol for voltage. So you can think of voltage as the force which causes electrons to go through the wire. That's what shoves the electrons through the wire. In fact, voltage is sometimes referred to as EMF. And that's a short, a short uh, an ac acronym for electromotive force. Think of it as the force that motivates the electrons to flow. Now, voltage isn't really a force. That's not a, not a perfect analogy. Voltage, remember, is really energy per charge, electrical potential energy per charge. But it's helpful in a lot of cases to think of voltage as that which causes the current flow. So you can think of it as a force. It's this uh, force shoving the electrons through the wire. So more voltage gives you more current. But it turns out there's something else going on in there as well. There's what we call electrical resistance. As the electrons flow through the wire, they bump into the atoms and are, are slowed down. Their motion through the wire is impeded by the material of the wire itself. And some materials conduct better than others, which is another way of saying that some materials oppose the flow uh, better than others. So some materials have more resistance. Electrical resistance is that which opposes the current to flow. And it should make sense to you that if there is more electrical resistance, then there is less current flow. So the, the current flow is inversely proportional to the resistance. And I'll just take note of that fact. The current is inversely proportional to the resistance. And mathematically, we can write it like this. I is proportional to 1 over R. That's the way we would mathematically say the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. Now, just about everything has electrical resistance. There are some materials called superconductors where the electrical resistance actually is zero. But most materials have some resistance. Even a piece of wire has some electrical resistance. Now in most cases, in most of the circuits we'll, we'll uh, talk about, the, the resistance of the wires is very, very small compared to the resistance of the other circuit elements and we can ignore it. But everything has some resistance. But these ideas that the current is proportional to the voltage and the current is inversely proportional to the resistance, those two ideas can be combined. And we can write this. I is equal to V over R. And that's Ohm's law. And it's most commonly written like this. V equals I R. Um, this is an easier way to think about it. The amount of current flow that you have is going to be bigger if you have a bigger value for V and it's going to be smaller if you have a bigger value for R and you can see the way that works with this fraction right here if you're going to actually put in a number for V 
and put in a number for r and do the calculation, you should, you should see that putting in a bigger number for v will give you a bigger value for the current. And putting in a bigger number for r down there in the denominator will give you a smaller value for the current. So i is equal to v over r. But it's most commonly written like this probably just because it's easier to type that way. And when people are writing textbooks or typing something, uh, it's a lot easier to type v equals ir than i equals v over r. But those two are the same thing. You could also, of course, write it like this. You could write r equals v over i. Those, those three equations are all the same equation, and that is Ohm's law. Now, writing it this way tells us something about resistance. If we look at this down at the bottom, uh, v, the voltage, is in volts, and I, the current, is in amps. So we have volts per amp. So you can think of the resistance of something as how many volts it takes to get an amp of current to flow. If it takes a lot of voltage to get one amp to flow, then it's a high resistance. That means the material has a high resistance. And one volt per amp is what we call one ohm. And that's written with the capital Greek letter omega. Looks kind of like this. And that's named obviously for George Ohm. And now let's take a look at a simple example problem that makes use of Ohm's law. Here we're told a small light bulb is designed, designed to run on 6 volts and to draw 300 milliamps of current. And this uh, terminology is the correct terminology. When you, when you turn something on or you connect something to a voltage source, it, that uh, allows or causes a certain amount of current to flow through it. So we say it draws that much current through the device or draws that much current from the source. So in this case, we're given the voltage and the current and we're told to find the resistance. So we'll use the equation in this form. Resistance is voltage over current or R equals V over I. And we have 6 volts over 300 milliamps. 300 milliamps is 0.3 amps. And 6 divided by 0.3 is 20. And when we divide volts per amp, we get 20 ohms. So that's the resistance of this light bulb, 20 ohms. And then we're asked in part B, how much current would flow through the bulb if it were connected to a 5 volt source? So now we're trying to find how much current. So we'll use the equation like this, I equals V over R. And in this case, it's connected to a 5 volt source. So the voltage in this case is 5 volts. And the resistance here, we know because we just calculated it. So we'll put in the 20 ohms. 5 volts divided by 20 ohms comes out to 0.25 amps. And these numbers seem reasonable. It's designed to run on 6 volts, and it draws 300 milliamps, or 0.3 amps. If we hook it up to 5 volts, a little bit less voltage, well, a little bit less current flows, 0.25 amps instead of 0.3. So that's just a simple example of doing a calculation using Ohm's law involving the resistance. In a lot of cases, we'll have circuit diagrams. We might have a circuit we're working with. Here's the battery and we have a resistor in the circuit and that's the schematic symbol for a resistor right there just a zigzag line and so we would call this the voltage V the voltage source and that resistor R has a certain amount of resistance and the resistance of the wires is usually negligible compared to the resistance of the the thing in there the resistor that's resisting the current flow and everything has resistance uh, we could have a light bulb here or a heater or a motor or all kinds of different things but it has resistance so sometimes we just draw a resistor there like that something that will just resist the current flow to model it uh, electrically or mathematically and we'll assume that all of the resistance is in the resistor and that there's none in the wires and that's not a 100 percent accurate but it's pretty close because the wires really do conduct really very well and the resistors are often used like this to limit the current flow so for example if we had a light bulb here having this extra resistor right here would cause less current to flow and you might, you might need that. You might have a circuit where you need to limit the amount of current that's flowing or limit the amount of current that's flowing to a, to a particular part of the circuit. And so resistors are used in that way. These little devices 
that are, are literally put into a circuit simply to resist the flow of electricity. And even if you're not using a little device like that, even if you're using a, a bulb or a motor or a heater or something, it still has resistance, which we call R, and measure it in ohms, and we calculate it using Ohm's law.